So hepatitis A and E are spread by the fecal oral route. So that means any ingestion of contaminated food or infected food and contaminated water, dirty water sources, um, those are anybody who's prone to that kind of poor sanitation and poor, poor water supply or uh, you know unclean water supply. Those are the people that are, that are at risk to get hepatitis A and E. Um, and that would be, you know, in, in, in any situation, if a person is infected with either hepatitis A and E in a household, then all the household contacts, all the sexual contacts of that, of that individual would be at risk. The other uh, concentrated areas that we can look at are daycare centers, for example. They are exposed to uh, nappy changes, etc., etc. So they can be exposed to uh, viral hepatitis A and E. Uh, in particular, viral hepatitis E uh, can be spread from animal to human. So, like for example, the, the particular animals I'm talking about are like pigs, for example. So any pig handler on a farm who is scooping up pig poo, for example, can uh, get hepatitis E from the, from the pig. Hepatitis B, C and D are what we call parenterally um, uh, transmitted. And that means from blood to blood products. So there has to be an exposure to infected blood and blood products. And that would include sexual contacts, people who inject drugs, for example, um, occupational health workers. Uh, so all of those are direct contact with blood. An estimated 3.5 million people in the United States may have chronic hepatitis C, and many of them are unaware that they have been infected. People can be infected for 30 or more years and not experience any symptoms of an infection. And those who do may feel nausea and fatigue, symptoms that don't necessarily prompt doctors to test you for hepatitis C. 